Hello, hello everyone. I'm live again, finally. Lots of reasons why I haven't been live for quite some time when you know I love to do the lives. But today's going to be a very positive video. So I want to stick to my subject and not wander off for this episode. Um, just really sharing with you what I'm up to. And if you've not been on my channel before and just found my live, it's Dawn. I'm on I'm from Cyprus. I do random lives. I don't give any warning or post any messages to say I'm going to go live. So it's a case of find me, hide and seek, catch me if you can. And it's really great to see how many people do actually come on or watch my lives later on. So if you're there, I see already we have people watching. So don't be shy there. Just put your name in the comment, where you're from and what time it is for you. That would be absolutely great. Um, if you want to just watch, of course, that's fine too. And hi there. How did you get on so quick? 2.10 a.m. from Andale Homestead in the Colony. Good grief. What are you doing up, Anne? <laughs> Here it's 9.11 a.m. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe you're on. You must have been doing something on your computer. <laughs> oh, uh, did you get my message in the end? You, When I said it on your channel, you kept saying my name. I'm sure you thought I meant Dawn. And that's why I went back with another message. And it's like you kept saying new beginnings. Oh, um, new beginnings of the garden. And this is a new beginnings. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I was meaning. I think you meant you thought I kept hearing Dawn. And your accent is beautiful. I just love your intro. You go, um, hi, I'm Ann, or whatever it is you say at the beginning. Just that little bit. I so love hearing it. Oh, my God, he's retro me. Wow, goodness me. <laughs> I'm not in your restroom. <laughs> well, if you stay, that's great. If you go back to bed, of course, I know you'll watch later. So today, I'm just going to be talking about my crafts, my pastimes, my hobbies, what I'm reading at the moment. And it's a pretty rough time here. Just very briefly, part of it is here we can't go food shopping anymore. So I don't want to go on about that. I've spoken to some people about it. I want to keep this one just positive to get away from our current situation right now. So... I will answer those questions later on if people ask them, but for this live, it's trying to cheer myself up a little bit. So, first of all, I'm going to show um, some of my cross-stitch crafts that I've done before or in progress. I'm also going to show you how I make my cross-stitch because I've come up with a different way for me. And I got a gift of cross-stitch from one of my viewers, Jane, thanks very much. You know, I did a video on it. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing with that. So I'm using some of that already. So first of all, I'm going to show you what I have been making for some time. I tend not to spend a long time doing things. Um, it's August now, it's so hot. I've been rushing around all morning trying to get some jobs done because now it's too hot not even half past nine so this is the time of year when I would sit out on the patio in the shade and maybe do some cross stitch well this is a project I was doing and I want to go back to but I've run out of the grey colour if you can see the background is grey and there's a lot more to do over here the way I've done this it's a bag I picked up I think I actually got it free at some sort of fair type thing where they were advertising. Well, I didn't want to advertise the thing that they were advertising. So I wanted to cross stitch over the top of it. So as you can see, I've chosen Fred and Wilma. Now these were two completely different size cross stitches. So what I did, they were actually knitting patterns. I don't know how to, I can do basic knit, but I'm not a knitter at all. And what I decided to do was print them out and enlarge them to be the right size I wanted for the bag. As you can see, I photocopied them onto um, 
square paper, couldn't think of the word thing. I have Greek words in my head. Square paper. Um, and I actually had to slightly change the design and Wilma had to be changed a little bit. I don't know if you can see at the bottom of Wilma, I've sort of doubled a bit and I've made marks where I wanted to sew and where I didn't want to sew. And all I've done, because it's a bag and it's not going to really need that much washing, I've literally cross-stitched over it. Now, as I cross-stitch over it, of course, the paper will crumple and start to give way, which is great because I don't really want it there. Now, you can either choose to leave the paper underneath when you're done or if you want to hook it out as you go. But I recommend you leave it until the last minute if possible because you might be able to see where I haven't cross-stitched, it does crumple. And another tip I do if you're doing this is make a uh, sort of edge in border rather than start on the things you want to make. And also start at the top and work down and try not to crumple it. As I say, I sew when it's hot and it makes it quite sweaty. But this seems to be working for me at the moment. But as I say, I've run out of the grey to do the surround and I haven't got the number or the make of it got the grey from I think it was in some free gift packet that I got when I bought the containers for cross stitch thread so I don't know a number to go with that I'll do a close up so you can sort of see the grey but anyway so that's one thing I'm sort of working on but I tend to be also when I get something new I kind of itch what I'm doing and start on that so something I do on my channel is what's under the hat and what's under the hat is the project that I've started using things Jane gifted me and this is from the IADA that she gifted me excuse what I've done I'm trying something else this time because I thought I've never done a gardening picture I've done cottages I've got a lovely um Thing I've made cottages. If you go on my other channel, Tranquility Through Life Natural Beauty, I do put a lot of my craft things up there. And I think it might be under one called Some of My Crafts or something like that. And I do show a lot of my cross stitch stuff. Look for the cottages. That's one of my favourite things I've made so far. But I thought I haven't made anything gardening. Have I got two thumbs up? There's only one of you watching. <laughs> interesting anyway so I thought I want to do something gardening and I looked through I'll show you in a minute my magazines I have where I've got some ideas for uh, cross stitch but there wasn't any one picture I wanted to do plus I wanted to put it in this is um in England I guess other places as well when you have school photos you get these different size frames and I've kept them and I wanted to do a bit of cross stitch within this of garden. So a piece of the IADA Jane gave me perfect for it. So that's another good recycle tip for some of you to say buying frames or making frames if you want to hang things. So as I say, I couldn't find any particular garden picture and you didn't know I had another channel. Um, I can do the link now because I think I have, oh, did I go out? Wait, wait. <laughs> Let me just open that. Let me see. If I disappear, it's because I'm playing. Uh, oh, I can't put it underneath it. Oh, I can put it in this column, I think. I haven't actually done any links in this before. So my other channel, one of my other channels, is Tranquility Through Life's Natural Beauty. What I do is use a Word doc. So I've got a Word doc with my channel stuff in. I'll show you one day actually how I um, arrange all my YouTubies things. Wait, that's all my music. It's above the music I use. And I finally put my music in alphabetical order, which is very helpful. <laughs> Because I've got quite a few pieces. Right. Oh, music for my themes. 
Teams, Go Get Funding, PayPal, Workaway, Airbnb, Patreon, I'll get there in a minute, <laughs> Mike's channel, my other channels. There, found it. Oh, it says URL in it, but we ignore that. Right, oh, not very good. Wait, highlighting, copy, minimize, uh, put it there, paste. Right, take out the bit that says URL. Mm -mm -mm. And there we go. A bit long winded, but I got there. So I'll put the other ones up for now. And then, Anne, you can copy these up and you will have them for each other. Uh, so that's Tranquility, which is basing. Interesting. There. Now, this is Mike's channel, which is all about more. Now, Airbnb and more of what I call heavy DIY stuff. That's on the farm retreat. And then I also have a dance tutorial channel, which is called Everything Dance Your Mentor. Copy, paste. Yeah, it says dance tutorial, but you don't put that in the thingy. Thingy, thingy is a good word. There. Okay, I ran over and showed love. <laughs> I really thought you knew all those. It must be. I think it was maybe Paula that went through all the channels with me, maybe. Who, Paula's now changed her channel name slightly, so check that out. Um, yes, yeah, so I was saying the... Um, I did post that last one, yeah. Um, so I couldn't find any one gardening-type picture. So I've gone through and found lots of little pictures I like and tried to make them into that oval shape. So this is what's going on so far. So you can see the watering can's done. This rose bushy thing, it's actually like a to tokore, to well, anyway, a cut, cut bush. And it's three levels at the bottom, then there's a bit and a tall bit. And then the reason I've got these squares of paper at the moment is these are the other bits that I'm going to put on as just working out how to fit them on and where they will go. So there's more to the picture. It's just random gardening bits, which I'm quite pleased with so far. Um, although I have to do it in full sunlight now because my eyes are not very good at all now. We've got lots of the same colour. I to really like. I think I need one of those um, mag magnifying things. I think there's one you can get that hangs over or clips over or something. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, I'm pleased with that. And the red. In that is from the thread also that Jane sent me. I thought it was very uh, appropriate that the things growing and dressing on that was from hers. And as I say, this Ada, I say I Ada, it's Ada. Um, this was from her, which is so useful because without this, I hadn't previously been able to make anything else. But as I say, I'm working on this square paper idea. So that and i'm actually posting um a video not this wednesday but next wednesday because tranquility and the dance channel only gets posted on wednesday i'm posting um tips for crafts pen top tips on tranquility so that's that one i haven't started the other things you gave me yet if you look on the video of that, let's see the video. Let's see if I can put that up for you. Sometimes I forget to put my Word doc up. But if I put it up, when I um, moderate for my other channels, they've all got a page or Word doc. And basically on that page, I put the people sort of come on mostly to their channels, put their URLs and things like that. 
Um, it's a fairly new one, isn't it? What Jane gave me. Workaways, Google Beds, Struggles of Life, Ants and Paper, I like my new ants. B-roll, Unboxing Mail, that one. So if you want to look at the gifts from Jane, what else I got for Cross Stitch, this is the video for this. Anyone who watches this back later, Unboxing Mail, Open More Gifts, so grateful. So that's the URL for that. Do I have patterns you go by? Yes, this is what I want to show you. I have a few magazines that people gave me, but many years ago in England, there was a set you could collect. So let me show you the set first. Excuse me, it's on the floor. Um, luckily, I just happen to have everything out right now. Because I was finding pictures. So the set of magazines that I collected were these ones. And I've got the whole set. There's, oh, I don't know how many. I'm trying to see the last one. They're good. But what I don't like about them is they were just any random patterns in any random magazine. I think it was to make you just buy the set. There wasn't like a theme or anything like that. So, for example, they've got a baby thing there. But then the rest of the magazine will, this one will be other random things. This one's borders. So there wasn't any way, and it doesn't tell you on the front what's in them. So some things are useful, some things aren't. Oh, this is quite pretty. You see that? Quite nice. I have also got a book where you can... It tells you how to cross-stitch your house, like how you transpose everything to what you've got in your house. So you have those pictures, and then in the middle of the book, you have all the patterns. As I say, they're quite good, but they were so random, these flowers. But what I decided to do in the end was make an index. Because there is no index with it at all. So I've got one of these little index boxes. WH Smith. It's funny in Cyprus, if you're, I think only England knows WH Smith. But it used to be mostly stationary, but then they did records and magazines. Oh, they do lots of newspapers, magazines, that kind of thing. I used to love WH Smith. I had one quite near where I lived. Um, but there is a shop out here that's semi-similar to how WH Smiths used to be, mostly stationary, and we call it WH Smiths out here, me and Mike, no one else. <laughs> anyway, so I got the index box, and I made a little key as to whether it was in a magazine or, what's that say, small designs, borders, a long design, like a bookmark style, or a whole picture. And then the alphabet is things like, oh, literally, if the cross stitch is alphabet, what page it was all on. This took me forever to do it, but it's been helpful for like now. Like I looked up G because I wanted gardening things, which pages were they on? So it told, I broke down what was on. So that took time. But worth it. Sometimes I start these sort of projects and I'm like, oh, why did I start it? But it was useful for this when I just wanted to find some quick gardening pictures. Uh, seeing how many magazines there are. 52. 52. I've got them in a crate. So there's 52 there. Gosh, John, why do you find the time? Oh, that was England. But in England, I worked technically two full time jobs. At the same time, I have said it before, so very briefly, um, I worked in nursery school for a while in the educational side of it. And that was like early shift. I think I had to leave home about five in the morning if I was on early shift because we gave them breakfast and that as well. 
So I did that. And then if I was on an early shift, I can't remember what time that finished. Maybe about four o'clock. I think something like that. Because the you nursery know, closed at six o'clock at night because it was for workers. And uh, so then I would go on to my dance school and teach late afternoon and evenings and Saturdays, all day Saturdays. And Saturdays would start from, I think, half eight. I taught till that was about six o'clock, finished there. Lessons back to back and some days off. But then obviously some days it might be rehearsals or competitions or doing my own professional dancing work, things like that. So it's one of those things, I think, when you don't do so much, you think, oh, where would I find the time? But then when you do all that, you make the time. Everyone's got the same amount of time. It's how we choose to use it or what we do with that time, I think. It's like now I think, how on earth did I do all that? Where did I get the energy? You all say that, oh, I do so much. But you know what? I do far less than I ever did. Yes, gardening's hard, but dancing and running around after little children. If I worked in schools or nurseries or hospitals, I worked with disabled children as well different things because I was a educator so and physio and um, psychologist and anything related to children basically had qualifications in so I would work freelance in all these places and I, like, oh, I just couldn't even imagine doing all that anymore I'm just like, I think it's the heat here as well to be honest so let me show you some more magazines Again, these are things I've either bought, like if I was going on holiday and wanted a magazine to read, rather than something, a throwaway type magazine, I'd buy, say, a cross-stitch ma magazine. So I understand not having the same energy as before. Yes, I don't know how old you are, Anne, but I'm pretty sure I'm older than you. People never believe how old I am. I'm guessing I'm older than you. Either that or you look blooming good, Anne. <laughs> so... Yeah, that one, that's more, I think there's a bit more embroidery. Now at school, I did embroidery and learned all the stitches and I did used to like that. And I wish I'd kept, you had to write notes and how to, I wish I'd kept all that. But you get to a stage where you think something's up to go. And at that point in my life, I wasn't really into doing it because you had to do it for school. I'll tell you one day all the things I made at school. Um, yeah, it's another magazine might use some of these bits i don't know oh that's why i was saying in my picture i'm doing now my cross stitch i'm going to put all those little pictures around and then i feel like i want to feel the background a bit maybe of flowers dotted around or maybe leaves on a vine or something like that this magazine's quite good because it's got um lots of odd bits of pictures this is something i more prefer i think Sometimes you feel like you're paying for articles. Oh, here's a leaf vine. See, these are ones I've just pulled out that I might use in between and might not. So that could look quite good. It's just sizing things up as well. I've never learnt cross stitch. I've just kind of done it. My sister did it and she got me into it. Same as the doll's houses. That was from my big sister who you've seen in many lives. So I've told you about her getting quite well known now <laughs> oh this is the what i'm actually working on now i have a magnetic board there i put behind what i'm using and then these are magnetic one holds it on and another one i can go up and down which rows i'm on so yeah this is the bush tree thingy thingy <laughs> Word of the day thingy. It helps when your brain doesn't work or when your brain's telling you a different language. You'll be 62 this month. Gosh, you're looking good, Anne. Wow, what date is your birthday? I must come on and say happy birthday. So, yes, that's what I'm doing now. That one. I'm not going to do this one. It's too plain for me. Oh, uh, else? separate because they're the ones I'm using oh this is another one I like so it's just got all the pictures random things so ah oh, this is where I got the watering can from 
watering can there. As you see, I did mine all one colour. Mike said to me, why are you doing a green watering can? Well, I know you get that metally colour one, but I said, oh, to me, a watering can is green. And look, the picture was green. Uh -huh. And then also in the picture, in the picture in the cross stitch, I'm going to do part of this. I just want the, what's it called, birdhouse? Birdhouse. <laughs> oh, my brain's gone. Birdhouse or whatever. I might do a bit of a fence. I don't know. I've left space for some of this, but I probably won't do like the whole picture thing. I don't know yet. That's going to be the last bit I do of the main bit to see what space I've got. So that's going on. Is there something from here? Um, I can't remember if I was doing another bush from there or not. There's a couple more bushes. That one's quite pretty, the big one, but as I say, I have to figure it out the sizes. I did think about what was the forefront of the picture, the smaller things and the bigger things, or the tall bird, I nearly said bird bath then. Yes, that's it, Jane. Uh, Jane, <laughs> oh, excuse me, my head. Yes, that's what it's called, August 25th. Wow. Uh, yeah, I might do, that's quite a nice little arrangement. So things like this in the spaces. That's pretty good. And this one, oh, I've got the, uh, I'll show you the pattern bits on that page. Um, the uh, person with the wheelbarrow. Let's see if I can show you what it looks like a bit better. As I say, this is one of the magazines where the charts are in the middle. I'm going to give up on this live in a minute. My brain's just gone. <gasps> oh, there's one. This is for my friend Kathy. Look, Kathy, what I found. I know Kathy watches all my videos. Ah, here we go. Oh no, this is the man with the watering can. Oh, here he is with the wheelbarrow. I thought that was quite cool. So I'm going to add that. That somewhere. Uh, what else have I got to show you? Oh, my cross stitch. I've got two of these. Now, a lot of these threads came free with kits or whatever. And I think when I first bought some cross stitch, I think we've got a free gift of some threads in a box. So I've got some colours there. Believe me, they run out really far. And I have a second one. This pleases me, the colours sorted out, well, semi-sorted out because I pull them out when I'm using them. Oh, that pleases me. Isn't that pretty? It's not that I've got some OCD or something. It pleases me because I just like, look, pretty colours. I'm particularly a fan of, when I was little, my favourite colour for some reason was yellow for years and years. But now it's purples or any sorts of blues. Those are wonderful looks. Good scene progress. I'll show you what else I'm making in a minute. Um, then I have a little box where I have odds and ends of any bits of threads. So if there's not enough to put back on the roll, these are the threads I'm using right now. And then I have this little tub that I take outside with me. I just covered an old butter tub that when I'm outside and I just snip the ends off the thread, they go in there and don't blow away. And then I can empty that any time. I don't know if any of you are actually interested in this. <laughs> and then this is what I take out if I'm sewing in the garden. Basically, I've got a pin cushion. Oh, this is embroidery I did. Look, it's upside down. There, so I've got a little pin cushion with my needles in. Little mini, these fold up these scissors, they're really cute, but they're strong. Got pencil in there for some reason for me to mark things. The threads I'm using. So this goes out in the garden. Let me show you these scissors. Hold it up. And then they fold in. So I used to take these on planes, that does push shut. Um, but I don't think you can take scissors or anything on planes. I don't fly anyway. I've never flown since all this thing about liquids and all that came in. I've never flown since then. So I, 
aware of the rules, but haven't flown for 16 years since we came to Cyprus. We've never left. We did have, we got married here, so we had uh, a double hun honeymoon because we went to, on two cruises. So I've left the island, but I haven't flown anywhere or we've never been back to England, not even to visit for 16 years. What was I going to tell you? Oh, other project. This was a kit I bought, but I mostly ignored the picture because I like dancing. These were bears exercising, but I put them in the colour of when I had a stage school in England. The colour of the leotards was kingfisher blue. So I made them kingfisher blue and they got a bar there and I'm not using, they were actually um, skipping and using weights for the bears and all that sort of thing. And I haven't finished that yet, as you can see, I need to edge some and finish off some more. So that's a project that was on its way, there's probably the actual picture of it here somewhere. Uh, what else? Oh, this I made. I made this for someone's wedding and their wedding got cancelled. So luckily I hadn't put well, cancelled because they weren't getting married anymore, not because of uh, COVID or anything. Um, so luckily I didn't put their names or date or anything on. So when someone gets married, they will probably get this. Quite like that. Again, I don't stick rigidly to designs. And also, I like to choose my own colours, so I'm not so fond of when you get printed on the Ada. I like to be a bit more free range. <laughs> oh, that's a good word for me. In my life, I'm a bit free range. I was had a terrible day the last couple of days, and I was like, forget it all, just enjoy yourself. So I am. <laughs> uh, Oh, yes, this is what Jane got me. In case anyone didn't see it, it's beautiful. And some more Ada. Uh, these were old boxes that I've actually put a picture on. I've got two boxes. They were children's games boxes. And... I'll show you one day what I did with the game because I've even uh, done something different with the game. And in here, I've got odds and ends, just bits and pieces. And there might be bits of projects. Where's, where's the other one? Just nice pictures that I've found. I like to keep. Oh, there's the aerobic bears. That's what it, they should have looked like. Then there's words, and I won't put the words on, but see how they're not the same at all. They're exercising. If you need more supplies, is there a store that has these things, or do you have to order them? Um, Jane asked me this. She said if there's anything I want, she could try and get it for me. There was a store quite a long way away from here, quite a drive, but at least, you know, we could do a day trip and spend time out. And uh, that closed down, and there is another one, but they're only online, and you can't get anything sent here. It's very difficult. It's like today, um, you'll see in a video, so I won't say what supposedly, well, not supposedly, it is what's coming. Something's been sent to me. And we went on, He's luckily he's done it with a tracking system when he sent it, and he sent it, he said UPS. And we don't have an address here. The address that I might put up sometimes is the P.O. box, and it's an hour and a half away. Is that P.O. box? Not the story. Um, so there's no post here, and a lot of vehicles won't come up the mountain and everything. And he was tracking it for me, and it, he just got that it had arrived at its destination. Well, that's obviously not our address. It's a P.O. box. So we phoned up UPS to say, has it gone to the UPS location or has it gone to our P.O. box? 
because that doesn't accept big parcels. So if, it, if we have to go further to UPS, and they said, what's the number? So I might put the number in. And they said, oh, that can't be right. It starts off LZ. And they said, no, no, it can't be an L at the beginning. It must be a one. Well, the guys actually sent me a Photoshop of it. It is 100% L, LZ. No, no, it must be a one. No, sorry, there's nothing here. And you haven't got enough letters and numbers. Well, we copied it off the actual parcel this guy's copied it off. So he did it all right. So Mike's going down, he's thinking, well, as they say, there's nothing there. It must be an LPO box. So that's where he's gone today. Anyway, we can't get Amazon here because we have to pay high tax if we have anything from Amazon. And, and I don't think they even really deliver here properly anyway. And we can't get anything sent to here. A lot of places abroad as well, if you order... If it's a P.O. box, they won't send the stuff. So it's very difficult. And as I say, this other cross-stitch place was only um, online. And it's no good if we've got to drive further away to pick it up from somewhere else. The seeds that um, Gerbin from Jandera Channel sent, they actually will drive to the bottom of the mountain for us to pick up. So well done to her for finding that for me. So I've ordered some since with some money I was gifted and it's great because they will actually go to the bottom of the mountain. Although if they don't have what you want, when you order, they just put something else in instead, which as you might have heard before, I ordered some climbing strawberry seeds and we got onions sent instead and asked them why have you sent that? I've got plenty of onion seeds and they said, well, we didn't have climbing strawberries. <laughs> I think they don't want to refund money, but that was fine. Hey, Melody, how are you doing? What are you all doing? <laughs> I'm having trouble speaking. <laughs> I can't think of words and I'm calling people wrong names. I say people, <laughs> it was only Anne on the comments. <laughs> it's because I was talking about Jane, so I called Anne Jane. Oh dear. We're talking about my cross stitch. So if you go back to the beginning, you'll see a lot more about the cross stitch. And also I've got this one I haven't made yet. This actually was from my sister. So I've got that to make yet. But never mind because I love that. Oh, what happened to the screen then? It's going funny colours. Is it going funny or in guys? Um the winter is a good time to make these things and got this it's a luggage tag obviously i'm not going to use that now but i will find a good use for this might be nice on a door to one of our airbnbs and put the name of what we're calling it we're calling the ones who used to stand bedroom which we've closed down for now in our spare bedroom because obviously contamination maybe um that was just called olive farm retreat because that's what our house is called and one that the worker wires are staying in, but we're making it better for Airbnb as well. And that's called Traveller's Rest because it's basic accommodation for those who want to get out and about and have a very cheap stay accommodation. And the other one is uh, the one for four self-catering is being called Rural Hideaway. Am I tired? Stop worrying about me, Melody. <laughs> if you go back to the beginning, you'll see why I've been a bit stressy the last few days, which is why I've come on here to get away from North Zon. Oh, can any of you give me an idea for this? Oh, oh, hauntings. I used to love hauntings. I hear it's very different these days, but oh, my memories. Um. My nan, who's now no longer with us, my lovely nan that I've spoken of before, she bought me this tablecloth and it's very big and it is the size for my white table, my dining table that's in the Sun Lounge. It's Christmassy looking, but I don't want to use the tablecloth. I'm so afraid of spoiling it or spilling something on it. But I want to use it. I don't want it somewhere like a table that's going to get 
spoil or dirty. I don't really want to cut it up either. There's an idea of a curtain, but what for? I don't know. I really want to use it, but I really don't know. Each Christmas I get it out and I put it on the table we're not using. I'm like, that's such a waste. I would love to have it out. Even thinking maybe a wall hanging. I really don't know what to do with it, but I really want it out. When I first did my lives, because I had a lot of stuff going on behind me that I didn't want to check what was okay to be seen and wasn't for different things. I had things on the whiteboard. I didn't know what people could see at first. Um, so I did put a clothes rail, hanging rail across, and I hung this over at that point. Maybe I'll just use it as a backdrop for um, when I do my chaps and that. I don't know. But if anyone's got an idea on that, that would be good. So I was also going to talk about what I'm reading now. So I've been saving what I've been reading recently. Um, one of my friends, Sue, she gives me old books that she's finished with. Bed cover. That's a good idea, Melody. Yeah, curtain. I don't know where I would use it. And I'm worried of, again about the sun. Bed cover. That is a good idea because it's big. I can't tell you the measurements, but I don't know if you go back and see any. Or if you go on the first few videos, I show you inside my house. So you're bound to see in the sun lounge a big white table and it sits two, four, six. But you could easily get more chairs around it. So if you have a look there and that's the, it's big enough for that, it's hard to find a tablecloth big enough for it. But we don't need on there. And I've got mats and that bed cover. Mm, that is useful. It's not going to fade. I just like to make pretty on the bed. I like that. I think that. That's where you are. Oh, that was Anne said that. Yes. I think so. Yeah, so the books. Now, this one, as I say, my friend Sue gives them to me. I read them. If they're really good, I'm like, oh, that was a really good book. I keep it. If I say, oh, that was okay or whatever, I put them out on the bookshelf for the Airbnbers because I feel that when you go on holiday, sometimes they have mini libraries in hotels or wherever you stay. But you're afraid to start reading it because you feel you've got to finish it and put it back. So I put them out and I put a note to say, take the books with you. We don't want them anymore. If you're reading another one, you finish it, put it back. That's fine. But if not, just take it because I have the good source of them. Can you see here all these piles of books? These are all what Sue's given me. And I've yet to read. And don't worry, guys. I read them pretty quick. And as soon as I've read them, I say, oh, any more books coming? And she gives me a good pile. This one was very different. I like books mostly about um, people relocating. Real stories are more preferable, really. And I like films of relocating. I'll show you those books another day that I've got. And funny enough, a few of them are Cypress, which I love all the more. But this one was very different. It's by Victoria Hislop. It's called The Island. Now, there is a film that's been made in Greece. I think I think it's the, Greek, the Greeks that have made the film. It's got a slightly different title. I did write it down somewhere so I could look it up. But I can't see it right now. So this is about, it's based on truth. And I'm still trying to find out if the characters in the book are real. And I'm pretty sure they are because Victoria has been the, what do you call it? The person who, when they make a film, says do this or don't do that, sort of the overseer of the film. And she's actually in the film playing, I believe, the main character. And I believe also I've seen a brief interview with her and one of the people she talks to is a man whom I'm not sure if he's in the film, but he was to do with it. And this is basically, um, let me read the front bit so I get it right. 
Where did it say it? It's about the island of Spinologa. And it's all about that island was used to put the lepers. It's off the north coast of Crete. It was Greece's main leper colony from 1903 to 1957. And it's a wonderful story. If you're not into historic, it's not so much that. It's the story of the people. But for me, that was something so different. I'm keeping this one. But you just don't know where it's going. Let's say that much. I never like to spoil a book, read it and see. But yes, there's history in it. And as far as I am aware, it's all fact. So I would really recommend that. As I say, it's not bogged down by history, but it's a really good book. So that one I wanted to share with you. Oh, this is a book I've just started. So I can't tell you much about this at the moment. It's called The Silkworm by Robert Galbraith. And I'll read the back for you. While novelist Owen Queen goes missing, his wife calls in private detective. At first, she just thinks he's gone off by himself for a few days and she wants Strike to find him and bring him home. But as Strike investigates, it becomes clear that there is more to Queen's disappearance. And I'm not going to read you any more because it will give it away. So I like kind of mystery, not murder mystery, Agatha Christie, not that so much. Just like thriller mystery more. And they're the sort of films I quite like and time travel films, but not things like Land of the Giants, not that kind of film, like time travel as into um, our time and back a bit and forward a bit. Not um, so much science fiction-y, if that makes sense. So this is a book that I've just finished reading prior to the um, Crete one. And I've spoken about this before in my last live. And this is by my friend Amy Dale. She does have a YouTube site called The Dale Tribe. So you can see more of her there. And it's off with her heart. And I believe you can get this on Amazon. I don't know how much it is because she just sent me the copy. And this is old, this picture. But she sent me a picture with it of the family. But this is old. So they're a lovely family. This is Amy here. And this is her husband, John. He's English, but they live in Colorado. And this is their youngest, Aspen, who now looks a lot more like Shay. And then they have Eli and Anna. And they don't look like that anymore. <laughs> Eli's a young lad now. And Anna's uh, just left university. Amy and John look practically the same now, though. But check those out. If you go on to the Dale Tribe, just say that Dawn from Cyprus sent you. Oh, and she wrote me a... I always say, if anyone gives me books, always write a little something in the front. And it's a different take on Alice in Wonderland. And I don't want to spoil it by saying what it is, but it's an adult read. Um, as in not a children book um, and it's got twists in there it brings in things you know of but for different reasons so that's a fun book that's a very fun book um, and then I just wanted to show you talking of Alice in Wonderland I have this very old Alice in Wonderland book now you get different TV programs like antique one we buy sell programs actually one of my neighbors was a host on one of the english antique type buy it and what's it worth type programs and i went on one and they valued any alice in wonderland books if they're old as a lot of money um i don't know if this one's got a published date in it same with Winnie the Pooh books and Rupert the Bear and Paddington books. 
It says first printed 1963, but this is this impression 1970. So that's not that old, but they said hang on to it. It's a sort of book, hang on as long as you can. It just goes up and up, particularly if there's an anniversary of any sort. But the reason I took that with me to have it valued was because I also wanted to take this which is the only thing I've got from, not my nan I talk mostly about, but from my dad's parents, this Alice in Wonderland book. And this is the only thing I've got from them. It's very battered, but apparently that doesn't make much difference for something like this because all the pages are gold edged. That's real gold. I don't know if it shows up there. Um, is there a date on this? Something smaller, I can't read that. And beautiful pictures. It's even got like the little sort of tracing paper between them. Does this have a date on? Um, and this was valued, he said, don't get rid of it, basically, for the same reason. I see no date on it. That's like little tiny things, so there's a date, you know. I think that's the book company. There must be a date in it. Ah, there's a little printed bit in there. Don't know if you can read it. I know this was passed down my grandparents' family. So the date this was signed is 1880, which probably then there isn't a published date. To my darling little something with her mother's love. M A U R, more? But she wasn't called Maureen. I wonder if any of you can make out the name. And I don't know anything about that. So that is very old. Basically, they just said it's not. Oh, here we go. Printing date 1874. 44,000. Don't know what that means. What's the date? Yeah. So that's very interesting. And the other book I wanted to share with you is a book I kept from my childhood. It's 3 a.m. here. I have to rest. I'll catch up rest later. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Anne, for joining me. Yes, it's always lovely to see Anne. So this is a book from my childhood. And my dad didn't really go out and buy the presents. He paid for them because my mum didn't work. But my mum went and chose most of the presents. But I know this is something that my dad chose for me. She was... My mum, I think, found all these pop-up books and I think he chose which one me and my sister had. She had the Cinderella one when I was younger. So, pop-up night before Christmas. I'll just share a couple of pages, but what I think I might do is read this and show you it all at Christmas time, maybe on my other channel on Tranquility. Find a good page. The last page. And when he goes up the chimney, he comes out the top. <laughs> That's pretty cool, isn't it? So I think I'll save that book for Christmas. Some of it doesn't work so well, but I remember being very little with it, hence why it's a little bit battered. But that is lovely. Yes, very old, that Alice in Wonderland book. It surely is. Surely is. I've got a few things of my other nan, and I'll probably share those in time. And as I say, my nan, uh, my mum's mum, which is the nan I talk about mostly, because we saw her all the time, and she wrote an autobiography, which I do want to read slowly, slowly. I might do in chapters on my other channel on Tranquility Through Life's Natural Beauty. 
And I'm pretty sure, as I've said before, when my mum just posted me a few bits of hers to keep, um, I didn't have any say in what I wanted. She just sent me some things that were easy to post. And there was one thing there, I'm like, I don't even remember seeing that, and it didn't mean anything to me. I'm sh pretty sure I said I wanted a copy of the autobiography, and I'm pretty sure it mentions it in there. So in the end, I was like, yeah, that, I'm glad now because I know what meaning it was for my nan, even though it didn't have a meaning for me. So I will need to start all that. So we talk about crafts as well and other pastimes. What else do I do? Well, I've said reading, cross stitch, I like making things, painting, drawing. I'm not very good at painting or drawing, but again, if you want to see what I've painted or drawn, I've got quite a few on Tranquility through Life's Natural Beauty. So there's plenty on there. But I like doing puzzles, you know, not, not like, um, well, I do like all sorts of puzzles, but jigsaw puzzles, that's it. See, <laughs> I remembered the word. <laughs> and in Greek, it's easy to say it's puzzle. <laughs> puzzle. Um, so I like those, but I don't like. Lots of sky, lots of green, lots of sea. I like puzzles where there's lots of bits and you have to figure out what bit of a picture it is rather than just expanses of green or blue. Not so keen on those. Or dark, because I can't see very well in this so bright light now. I don't like sort of dark puzzles. So my sister has actually sent me um, quite a few puzzles where they're actually a game or something as well as just being the puzzle. So some things are you do the puzzle and then you have to find things in it. Or ones that I do like, she sent me a lot as well, were called was jig, as in back to front jigsaw. And then you have the picture on the box, but let's say you see the people looking at you on the picture. And it's not what you see in the picture, it's what they can see. So you've got no idea, but you can work it out around other things or someone else in the puzzle from their perspective, what they can see. So it might be if the person's behind the people, it might be well, what can he see? So it would start off the backs of these people and beyond. So they're pretty cool puzzles. If you ever see those, they're called Wadstig. And there's a whole series of those. They're pretty good puzzles. Easy to remember. <laughs> Puzzle. Well, yes, Greek words, um, even though we speak separate, we do use some Greek words, although a lot of our words aren't the same at all. Um, obviously, English language, most of it is taken from Greek, particularly medical and scientific words. Some um, botany words are Latin. But a lot of the words, um, particularly biology and medicine, are actually Greek. So that kind of helped. Or in hindsight, when I learned the word, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's obvious. Like the word for breath is anything to do with breathing in medical terms and things like that. So, yeah, it was easy to learn in that respect, but very hard in respect of if you know other languages, you'll know they have masculine, feminine, neuter, and different tenses. In English, you just have past, present, future, and it doesn't matter who did it. So I dug, you dug, he dug, she dug, it dug, they dug. It's all dug. But in Greek, you change the ending of the word, the word for dug. You change the ending depending on who did it. And then, as I say, in English, we have past, present, future. In Greek, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven different tenses. <laughs> so future, um, different future tenses, subjunctive, um, past, continuous, <laughs> and things like this. So that's why I'm slowly doing the series and I keep saying on my Greek language series, write it all down because I'm trying to teach it the way I would like to have been taught. Whereas in our Greek lessons, 
Um, it was all done in Greek. It was all Greek grammar rather than just tourism Greek where you just parrot how much is this and how many do you want and these kind of words were proper language and I had to do four exams. Um, yeah, so when we learnt it all, it was a case of I had to first of all work out the way I wanted it to be taught and work out almost graphs and charts because all the other people in the course were of other languages where they already had all these different tenses and how you learn um, I, you, he, she, all those sort of columns that you learn in French and other languages. They already had that concept naturally in their language. So I had to learn all that bit first properly. So I kind of had to do it twice as much work. And often in the class, I would just write everything down and then come home and spend hours figuring it out and looking it up. And yeah, so that was very interesting as well. And they said I was the only English person who got beyond the first year of this proper course and doing the exam. And you couldn't continue if you didn't take the exam. So a lot of English people dropped out even before the exam. But some people dropped out when it got to the exam. And I think one other person did try to do the exam and they didn't pass. So it was a lot of work. So, Melody, I loved your email. I really appreciate that. As you say, yeah, if you can Zoom now, that will be really good. As I said back, I've only done it once. I was really pleased with Zoom. It was something um, business um, I had to link up on Zoom with. So only did it from this end, as in they sent the link and sorted it all out. So I'd have to look into how to do it from this side. If you can do that now, that would be really cool actually seeing you and talking to you face to face I can do stream yard and do that but I don't know about that because then other people come on I think you can do a private on that but I think zoom is better because we can do other things while we're on zoom as well so what time is it there Melody you've got to be early hours of the morning haven't you must be. Must be early hours of the morning there, I believe. But yeah, show me uh, on your videos. You say, oh, I haven't got much to show. I just love looking around. I would love to have been an estate agent. I just love looking at people's houses and that kind of thing. But you had to work Saturdays, and I always went to stage school on Saturday. And uh, so, and you had to drive, obviously, and no, I don't drive, so that was a no-go. Or I would now actually like to do kind of like house clearance. And we've always said for a laugh, if we weren't so remote, but we had land, I'd like to have a building on the land and then buying things or salvage things, like a little kind of second-hand reclaim sort of property and everyone could come up and either swap stuff or donate stuff and then Mike could do the outside bit and he could do all your metal work and bits of wood and all that that's what I'd like to do but we're so remote here I don't think anyone would come up here they can't be bothered to take the stuff to a recycling place so I want strawberries yeah I want strawberries I want a lot more soft fruits um, we've got big trees. We did have peach trees when we first came here, but they were on their last legs, so they've gone. So we've got fig trees, we've got a couple of orange trees, but one's bitter orange and the others are really small. Uh, but I want blackberries. I want blackberries. Um, strawberries, raspberries. I love raspberries. What else? That's a good spin. It's, yeah, it's something I should sort of. So the trouble here is, Melody, if you want to start something like that, you've got to register it's a business. And, I, and to be a charity, you're not allowed to take any money. And if it's donations, you've got to show where it's going. And it's so much effort here to just do paperwork before you even begin, even if you're not going to take money. It kind of puts people off. It's a different concept here. Whereas in most countries, 
if you run a business, you pay tax. Let's say you're self-employed and you just do your accounts. I've always been self-employed. And you do your accounts and you pay your tax. Out here, it's different. They've got a book, the book of professions. <laughs> and then what you do is you go and you say, I'm going to be opening a hairdresser's business. First thing they do is look at which area you want. And if there's too many, you're not allowed to do it if you're not Cypriot because they don't want a flood of the market, which is a good thing. Then they say, right, hairdressers, look up the page of hairdressers. Hairdressers should earn blah, 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 a certain amount per year. Therefore, if you're opening up a hairdressers, you've got to pay based on that fact X amount of tax a year, starting from the day you open. You don't even get leeway because you should have done research, got clients, made sure it was profitable and start earning straight away. If you don't earn anything even close to that, they assume you're either no good at your job, so you shouldn't have the business anyway, or you're trying to make out you don't earn when you do. So here, to open the business, day one, you have a certain amount of tax. I think to start with, you've got a lower cap of it, but they say if you're a professional, oh, and you have to be fully qualified in whatever you do. You can't just go, oh, I'm going to open up a cheese factory. You've got to be qualified in the profession and show that as well. So, therefore, there's no reason why you shouldn't get that. There's no leeway either for the fact that Cypriots mostly only go to Cypriot companies or whatever else, sometimes because it's friend of a friend or family, but that's that's what they do. Uh, that's good news. Yes, yeah, too bad. They make it very hard. I kind of in... The idea of, um, I believe it should be first and foremost, people whose nationality it is get the income. Oh, that's Mike back. See if he's got my parcel. I'll get him to come and say a quick hello if you like. Go, oh, you're on the live. <laughs> Did do one all last month. But no, I, I believe that. And I like this idea you can't have. 10 hairdressers in a row and things like that in England anyone could open any shop anywhere and if they've got more money to offer something more then it closes down a smaller business and I think this is also good why sort of supermarkets took over from in England corner shops because corner shops had to charge a bit more for the convenience and having small stock and all the rest of it but if a big supermarket opened next door then they were kind of out of business straight away being a company and whatever so no I, I kind of see that and I'm always of the ill if you come to a country deal with it you've come you should do your research and if you don't like what it is or how it is then you know you've made that choice and that's why I don't like when some people come here and say oh everything should be written in English no because they're the same people who when they lived in England would complain if notices and road signs and things started going up in other country, in other languages. So there is that. So I'm kind of, this is why, was it you saying about the goats? Yes, I think it was you saying about all oh, the goats, if they get in the, your things, the farmers should be liable and not liable, you didn't use that word. But, but as I say, that's why the Cypriot farmers like me here, because they said, oh, do the goats not bother you? And I'm like, well, if they come in, yes, it's up to us to check our fences and shut our gates and things like that. But you were here first. We came after. So I don't like it when other people move in and make changes. It's like the electric here. Yes, all right, some people need it. But we came here. There wasn't any electric here. So I wouldn't like to make a stand and say I demand electric here, that kind of thing. So there is that. So, yes, we knew what we were letting ourselves in for. That's why I don't like it when laws change or they say now you need this or now you have to do that. It's like when they brought in um, all these rights for dis disability buildings, which is understandable. And yes, I agree. But they were saying, like, if you had a basement restaurant, you need a fire exit and you need disabled ramps. 
if you look at some of the old separate buildings, it is absolutely impossible to build disabled access to some of these real underground places. So what do you do? Do you say you can't have the business now? Or are you allowed to say we don't have disabled facilities? That's where it becomes very tricky. And as some of the separate said, we, we've been here generations and generations, and now you're telling us we have to close if we don't make something that's impossible to do. So that's a tricky situation. Ha ha, yes, I see. <laughs> uh, yes, it's bending, adapting, all the things I like to try and be able to do. And who was here first? I'm not saying everything is right or whatever, but things like the animals. And I think I put to you about how they roam freely and I get so cross when people say, oh, separates are like not very nice to animals. All people in all countries, you're going to find some people that aren't kind to animals. But overall, when you think they let them roam, our neighbor who's since died, um, he had dogs. There's no way the dogs would be in the house, but they weren't caged. They would be outside and he'd have the doors open. But he had that invisible line where they knew they couldn't come in the house. And cats, they don't have cats in the house. But they're pets and they love them. But animals are outside. They don't live in the house. So in that respect, I think they are kinder to animals. Uh, it's just amazing how these goats go home. One of our goat farm there's two main ones here but there are others around and he actually goes out when the babies are new and they put the bells on that's why they've got the bells and they're kind of trained to follow the sound of the bells the ones who have done the journey and he goes around when the babies first go out and walks with them and just checks there like that and I said oh are the bells then for the like the leader the clever ones oh no he said the bells are for the ones that wander off so if they do go off and don't come home we can hear where they are <laughs> so yeah live and learn you're respectful you're very kind <laughs> i try to as i say if i just don't like that you come that's why you hear me go against britsville quite a lot and that's another reason the locals liked us very much we didn't know if anyone spoke english around here or not that wasn't part of it. I wanted to be authentic. I would say, rather than respectful, I would say I'm authentic. I like things. That was one of the reasons we came to live in Cyprus, because things in England were going really pear-shaped, and I'm so glad we came now. It's terrible there. It really is. There's no respect and everything. Anyway, this is a happy video. But here, it was the family scenario, you don't go around to your children, don't go to their friends' houses at weekends. It's family. Family get together and mostly they'll go to a restaurant but sit there the whole afternoon and children go off and play. Or some families go and meet up on the beach and they go to the beach. It's all family there. The children do clubs or activities. That's during the week after school. And out here, a lot of the time, the activity places like dance schools or taekwondo or whatever, they actually used to send minibuses around and pick all the children up that were coming. So the parents carry on working. But a lot of them have stopped that now only for the fact it isn't cost effective. So by the time you sign them up and driven around and run these big minibuses, that's not so cost effective. But a lot of the separate children after school do further education. So that's another reason why they're very intelligent here and highly educated, because they learn three, four languages before they really got to the end of their schooling and thoroughly learn them as well, maths and history. And, and they don't have much time in school for what I call the fun activities it is learning but then we finish school at lunchtime here because the heat in the summer so they can do their further schooling in the afternoon or their activities mike just come say hello to melody he's just got back from did you get the parcel oh no 
Right. Let's say hello to Melody. Hello there. <laughs> she did. Oh. Ma, 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 ma. Oh, <laughs> I like the chat. <laughs> Oh dear. Yes, I do it the simple way. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so I think I'll go now as Mike's back. And uh, really great to chat with you, Melody, as always. Um, posting on Wednesday, all my next channels, everything posting next one on Wednesday. But it's great to catch up because I was busy with the work workwires in July. And as I say, things have been a bit pear-shaped. Go back to the beginning of the video if you didn't catch what's going on. So, uh, yeah, it was really nice to chat with you again. Oh, she's put a higher mic. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if you see Mike's channel or not. In this, I don't know if you was on Melody when I put all my channels in this chat. So I don't know if you've seen Mike's one or not. It's Solid Farm Retreat Cypress. I'm on some of that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I'll finish here for today. And as I say, next videos on all the four channels are going to be on Wednesday. And thank you very much for your support and your amazingly kind words. Really, I'm not worthy of them, but they make me very happy. And all the same back to you, Melody. So, oh, Colin's in, Colin Waffles, we call him Goof, he's such a goof. So, see you next time, hopefully, and until then, have a great day, have a great week, and to everyone who watches this after it's been posted, Meraki, there is a video that tells you exactly what that means. <laughs> so, bye for now.